So we did modified contour line drawing. That was the last thing we did, which is basically a line drawing and it doesn't have any shading. There's no color, there's no shading. So you can basically understand it like this. <clears throat> it's just a line drawing, lines on the inside and the outside. So here's a finished one that has uh, just uh, pen and ink on it where I went over the lines. Here's, our, here's just the uh, pencil drawing. You may keep yours as just a pencil drawing. The pen and ink does make that particular uh, contour line drawing. Contour lines drawings in general look good, real sharp when you use ink. But if you don't have it, that is okay. I will not deduct any points, but if you wanna you know, go ahead and do that, it will make it look good. So when it looks good, you usually get a higher grade because it just looks better. All right, I have my hand. I am going to just um, draw it uh, let's see straight just so that it's very easy to understand but I want you to do what is challenging to you so if you want to pose your hand like this or in a different way or you just want to make it straight like this front or back that's up to you but for this demo I'm just going to get started so I am looking at the hand I'm going to do a, a continuous contour approach, although you can lightly sketch. So this one doesn't have uh, that, that uh, strict a rule with how you can approach drawing your hand. Uh, you can look at your hand and you could look down at the paper to see how you're doing. So it's not blind. You can check. Some of you might be... Um, Breathing a, a sigh of relief. Oh, thank God, we can look. All right, so I'm making my uh, ring uh, ring finger here a little bit longer because uh, the pinky is much lower and shorter than that. Uh, I'm really paying attention right now. I'm trying not to... Um, I'm gonna go back and put in the uh, the maybe the fingernails but I'm not gonna bother drawing um, any of the uh, wrinkles or anything like that. So this is what we're gonna call cross contour line drawing. And we're gonna have the outline of our hand, which I'm working on right, right now, but we're also now going to describe uh, the three-dimensional surface of our hand through our drawing. Now, how in the world are we going to do that without shading? Because this is still a line drawing. So this is how we're gonna do it. We are going to, we have lines going in this direction. Let's just say that this was, um, let's say this was the X and the Y, we're going like this. All the dots that form the um, the fingers and then fingernails, okay? Because all a line is really is, is a dot that is moving through space. When a dot is moving through space, uh, it creates the line. So that is one definition of a line, uh, a dot that is moving through space. So I just saw um, Kylie, we're doing a demonstration, Kylie, so you can uh, take notes. I'm saying some good stuff. Um, so what is a dot? I mean, uh, what is a dot? A dot is a point, right? And what is a line? A point moving through space. So you can think of all of the, the these lines right here that make up my hand as little dots just moving through space. Just imagine it's all filled up with dots, but they're not dots. That's just, we'll say it's a line. <laughs> now I'm gonna draw the, the negative space in between my middle finger and my ring finger. And I notice that my middle finger is just a little bit longer and also it's a little thicker and it is looks like it's kind of 
off to the side. I'm sorry about the lighting going in and out, but we are kind of, we're taping the, the drawing part. We're not taping you, we're drawing the taping part here um, for people who were who are out and who need to watch this or if you need to watch it again to understand what the assignment is, uh, you, th it will be up on YouTube and I'll, I'll put the link to the assignment like within the assignment description. All right, just make sure that you click the subscribe bell. I'm just kidding. Uh, make sure you like the video, <laughs> but do subscribe because you, you, that way you just get there real quick and you're able to find your um, the demos to your assignments a little easier. All right, so I'm I'm actually using sketch lines. I'm gonna, that's okay to use sketch lines, but I kind of like the boldness of one nice single line. So I might go over that and uh, erase a couple sketch lines later when I have the time. Now look at this. My thumb is way down here. So just notice just how far down a human thumb is. It's just so much lower on, on the hand. Okay. Okay, and then we have, this is a little bit, a little bit rounder. Okay, I don't even really need to draw the thumbnail. I actually don't need to, but I could, I could. All right, so I'm looking at my drawing now. I don't know if you see all of it. Here we go, let me move it up. And I'm looking at it co compositional wise. I feel like uh, if I was to do a really good one, I would do that over again and try to put it uh, kind of in the middle of the paper. Um, just because I have so much negative space here. Uh, but I'm just gonna keep going and moving on. Now I wanna look at my hand. And when I look at my hand, I know that my fingers are like, your fingers are like little cylinders. Okay, mine look like little sausages. So we know that they are round. Oh, look how shaky they are, the arthritis, oof. So we know that they're round. So this is where the cross contour comes in. I want you to, using repeating lines, I want you to describe kind of like the uh, Z axis. Remember you said this is X and Y, all these points kind of on a flat, on a kind, kind of like on a, a flat plane. Now we're going to be talking about the Z axis. So we're, I want you to take curved lines and describe, draw many, many curved lines. And I want you to describe the roundness of each finger. So this is what's called cross contour. It's gonna look like a hand with many curved lines, but don't just do random curved lines. Um, somewhere on here, I also have a, a vein or a knuckle. So where, when you hit that, it's gonna cause, you see that? It's gonna cause like a little bump. And if there's a valley, an area where the skin goes down, you're gonna bring that line down and then you go up and then you can go up again because uh, your, your hands have many kind of little features like little veins or knuckles. So does everyone understand what, I, what I'm doing right now? Anybody have any questions so far about um, what I'm doing, why I'm doing this? and why I'm drawing these lines here. Okay. If you see, if you see a bump right there, the next line's not gonna be straight. This is where I have a vein on my hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to repeat that little bump here. And what will, that will do is make that vein area look like it's continuing and then gradually, gradually f flatten that line to show that the vein uh, disappears somewhere over here. So pretend that you are laying like a curtain or a piece of fabric that has 
um, horizontal lines. It's a very, very thin fabric, so it molds over your hand very easily. And you're throwing it over your fingers. And, but that fabric is also clear. That's why this is all imaginary, because I don't think there's any such fabric. But because the fabric is clear, you could still see your hand underneath it. So you kind of pretend you're doing something like that. Uh, your hand, your fingers up here, are gonna have a, a lot tighter curve. Try to make the curve uh, go down on the ends a little bit more up here because the more curvy the line is, the more 3D your hand's gonna look. So you're trying to describe and make this hand look 3D without putting in shading, okay? And so see if you can do that. This is called cross contour line drawing. And I'm going to um, continue to do that on my hand. I want to see also maybe there's a place where it flattens out a little bit. I don't know. But I'm, I'm going to look at the wrinkles in my hand too. Sometimes the wrinkles of my hand also kind of describe because they go around my whole finger. So it actually, it's actually going to look a little bit more three-dimensional if you put the curves in. It, what's important is that you start putting those curves in. And you can make a lot tighter space between the lines. And that will kind of give you a more smoother effect. So just play with that. If I suddenly made my line straight like that, that breaks the illusion. That makes it look like, oh, it's back to being a flat hand. So what you don't want is start to go flat again. Uh, the wrist area, I want to make round. So I want to keep that curvy, keep that curvy. Uh, how many lines should, what's the spacing between my lines? You don't even have to make them e even, although that would look better. I would say keep them tighter rather than farther apart because that will look a little bit more detailed. Okay, so I want you to try this method of drawing. Why is this method of drawing, why, why does this even exist? Like, who, who thought of this and why? Um, this, this method of drawing and of, ex yeah. of expressing um, kind of form, basically it's expressing form, uh, can be used by people who use pencil pen and pen and ink. Artists who are pen and ink artists that uh, use uh, the line exclusively, but who want to, to want to show that three-dimensional look to their pieces. So if they did that, or if you're a printmaker and you were um, etching these lines in a metal on a metal plate, so basically you had to make a line to show your information, but you wanted to draw a portrait of a person that looked more realistic, but you couldn't add shading for some reason, you could do this. This is one way of expressing a three-dimensional form while still sticking to line. So as you see this, as you see this, let me see. Does it look more three-dimensional than if I just had uh, just an outline or a contour line drawing of a hand? Do you st are you starting to see three-dimensional look uh, coming through? Okay, good. So this is our next project. You just have to do one. Um, you know, if you want to try the hand flat, you can. If you want to challenge yourself, um, maybe make a more dynamic pose. And I have a feeling though, that if you do do a pose where your fingers are at different angles, that's gonna actually look more three-dimensional uh, than the one where your hand is flat because, you know, the lines are just gonna like go ro rotate and go around the fingers. And this part of the hand is pretty flat anyway. So it doesn't make for as three-dimensional 
a drawing as if you were to position some of your fingers a little bit differently. So I'm just letting you know, I'm not trying to say do it, do the hard, do it the hard way or you know, it's just going to look actually more 3D. I realize as I'm doing this, um, because your lines are, you're going to be able to show how they wrap around your fingers in different directions. And that will look a little bit more convincing. So if something is really round, like I said, I would make the curve a little bit more pronounced at the edges. If you want to make things so it's more like a tighter curve like this okay but if something is um, a tighter curve if something is more flat then you want to use a flatter curve like the top of this hand right here the top of the hand might actually have like some bumps because of the, the veining on your hand so let's try that think about a pose Think about a pose for your um, your hand and work on the contour line drawing of your hand. Um, the modified, well, I wouldn't even say the modified. If you want to uh, draw the fingernails, that's fine. And then the fingernails can then have their own, like a little bit tighter set of lines and that will make the fingernails uh, stand out from the rest of the finger. So don't have the line just go straight across the finger. Have the fingernail line be a little curvier because they are. They are. They do um, stand out. So if you've ever put acrylic nails on, um, they're like, you know, they have a hump shape. And they stand out and they have their own kind of profile. Um, and your finger is bigger, so the curve for your finger itself might be a flatter curve. So make your fingernails like a little bit of a tighter curve, like the letter C, that type of a tighter curve, okay?